Have you had an accident recently that wasn't your fault? Well, where there's blame, there's a claim. No, don't worry, I haven't got a new sponsor. But those annoying adverts that you see all the time on television are a good example of tort law. Now, the word tort itself derives from Middle English and originally comes from French and Latin, and it literally means a wrong or an injustice. Normally, when we think of one person wronging another person, it's within a criminal context, though. So if I steal from somebody else, then I'm clearly wronging them. And while crimes do technically count as torts, what we're mainly dealing with is civil wrongs or civil injustices. So to give you an example, if you went to the supermarket and you tripped over a loose wire, then there isn't any criminal liability there. Nevertheless, you've suffered an injury and you should be able to claim compensation. And that's the basic principle of tort law. Now, to understand tort law fully, there's a relatively simple formula that you will need to understand and you'll be able to apply this to all of your essays and all of your problem questions. So what is this secret formula? Well, let's have a quick look. We can see here then that a duty of care and a breach of that duty of care which causes damage equates to liability in tort law. And so it's possible to go through each of these elements in turn in order to gain a full understanding of the law of tort. So let's start with the duty of care. And I imagine if you went up to a random person in the street and asked them, where do you think a duty of care exists in society? They might give you a few basic examples, between, such as a parent and a child, or between a solicitor and their client. But actually, the law takes a duty of care much further than this. And so a duty of care can exist between an employer and an employee, or can even exist between people who have never actually even met. And so the famous case of Donoghue and Stevenson is probably the best example of this. There then has to be a breach of that duty of care, and so this makes us look at the element of causation, and the law splits causation up into two. So firstly we have factual causation, which focuses on the actions of the defendant, and so we'll see in future lectures ideas such as the but-for test, and there's also legal causation as well, which focuses on the acts of other parties. So perhaps a third party intervened and helped cause the damage themselves, or perhaps even the claimant themselves helped contribute towards their own damage that they had incurred. And this brings us then onto this last element of damage, which we can now look at. And again, if you went up to a random person on the street, said, what do you think damage means? They might give you examples of a physical injury, such as a broken leg. But again, the law is going much further than this and can include things such as psychological harm and even go as far as things such as a damage to a person's reputation. These are all things which people should be able to claim compensation for. And there we have the basic cheat sheet for tort law. As long as you understand that formulation, you're going to be well on your way to understanding tort law in general. And it's really just a question of making sure that you add in cases to show off your knowledge in a problem question or an essay question at this stage. And so that's what we'll be focusing on in future lectures. Even defences in tort law come back to that basic formulation. And so a defendant may say that they didn't owe that person a duty of care or they didn't cause that damage. Well, I hope you enjoyed this very short lecture on tort law. If you did, make sure to leave it a like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, then leave those below and I'll make sure to get back to you. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.